There are a lot of mistakes that YouTubers make or a lot of things that are distractions that we spend time focusing on or worrying about that actually slow us down and hurt our end goal on YouTube. So we wanna just eliminate all those things and that's what we're gonna address in this video. So I've been doing video production as a service for a decade now, and we are producing hundreds of episodes every single month. And so there's a lot of things that I've learned that are important and that aren't important and things that we should just avoid. So let's just dive right in. One thing that was a temptation to me for a long time is a drone or drone footage, because I love technology. I love flying drones. And so there's this temptation of, man, I should buy one. That's gonna be a business expense. But I couldn't really justify it. I'm like, but how am I gonna use it for these videos? You know, if I'm making how-to videos, leaf titles, why do I need drone footage? Now, the point I'm making with this one is just get the equipment that you really need to do the job that you're, you're trying to do and be realistic about the things that you just want that's more of a toy. I do now have a drone that's an FPV drone and it's just purely for entertainment. I put on those goggles and I get to fly around between trees. But yeah, I, I, it wasn't a business expense. Another temptation that you're gonna have is GoPros and getting the latest and greatest. I don't know how many GoPros that I've bought that I've actually never used. It's only a couple of them, but I have a couple of GoPros that's like, oh, this one does this and it's faster and it's smaller and, and whatever. It, it can go this deep in the water. I'm like, okay, clearly a business expense. I'm gonna use that. And I've never hit record on it. Ah, it's like, that's painful. Like there is a use for GoPros, especially if you're vlogging or you're doing a lot of fun stuff or action shots or even for, for builds or something where you need cameras all over to get lots of different angles and they just constantly roll. But for the type of videos that I'm teaching you how to make, you don't need a GoPro. Now let's talk about stock footage, footage that you can buy that will make your videos look more professional. Well, a lot of times they actually make your videos look a lot more cheesy. You can tell that they're actors and people know that, oh yeah, you just bought that and you put that in there. So you want to be careful. You want to be selective. And when you can create your own B-roll, so imagine you're talking about a client that you're working with and then it switches and you have some footage, even if it's just filmed on your phone, but somebody filmed you working with that client or sitting down at a desk with somebody and then it comes back to you in the video talking to the camera. I mean, just showing shots like that can be really valuable, way more valuable than stock footage of some executive sitting at a desk, you know, that's all fancy and it's got a bright white background. It doesn't look real and you can get caught into a trap of, of buying all this stock footage that is just gonna make your videos look cheesy. We've all seen the news on TV and we know all the graphics that they put on the screen. They put these lower thirds banners and and they have all these cool text effects. I want to encourage you to minimize those, especially in the beginning, because the editing software really touts those as features. Hey, buy this software because it's got all these features and 10,000 text effects and different things that you can do and transitions. The more that you do those without experience, the more cheesy it's going to be. And so don't get distracted by those things. And when you want to experiment, go ahead, but start simple. Just do a simple blur transition or just put text on the screen in a basic font. And you don't have to have it swirling around before it finishes. Just have it, you know, slide onto the screen or just appear. Let's talk about green screens. Okay, green screen is really cool. In fact, a lot more people use that feature when they're on Zoom now, kind of the automatic thing, and you don't even have to be in front of a green wall. But if you're thinking about, oh, I wanna make my videos be real professional, I can be wherever I want. I can be standing on the beach. And, and the reality is, yeah, green screen is really cool, but for the type of videos that I'm teaching you how to make, I'm gonna recommend that you stay away from green screen. You want to be in a real location. I like if you can film in your home or even better, rent an Airbnb that's got a lot of cool environments. The reason I recommend that is then you don't have the distractions of home and you've got the discipline of I've rented this for the day, so let's go there and you're gonna film that day. There are exceptions to this, but the disadvantages outweigh the, the pros. A huge disadvantage that I haven't mentioned is the, the rendering and actually making it look real. Like if, if I wanted to film myself right here, but, but you know, erase what's behind me and put in a beach, like I'm in Cancun or something like that. Like the lighting here probably doesn't match the direction of the sunlight on the beach or the, the color temperature or the proportions or the, the height of the camera. Like you've got to have everything matched and dialed in perfectly. So another way that people will use green screen is they'll just put fancy graphics or just uh, a color behind them. And, and that can look more professional. But what I encourage you to do 
is try and make your videos like relatable and approachable, like you're just having a conversation. So if somebody called you on FaceTime or on Zoom and they saw your environment, they saw you're sitting down on a couch in a living room, they see a beautiful you know, house behind you, they're gonna feel like, okay, wow, I, I'm with this person you know, virtually, but I'm with this person in their home versus imagine, imagine a relative called you on the phone on FaceTime, you know, you were filming in front of a green screen that looked really corporate and, and professional, it's like, hey, no, I, I just wanna, I just wanna talk with you one on one. That's actually the feeling that we wanna create in our videos. Now let's talk about the set or your your filming location. So the location that I'm in right here, does this look like a set? I mean, this is my studio. Okay, but how do I do this? It's not because I bought a commercial building and I built all these different sets in it to make it look like a home. I actually just use a home. I bought a house. It's my filming studio, and in many of my videos, you'll see the pool in the background, or you'll see the fireplace, or you'll see the kitchen, or you'll see bookcases, or an office setting, or, or the great room, or the theater room. I intentionally want my backgrounds to look like a home so that I can build a relationship. Also, because I don't want to create a corporate image. Like, I have a business, all my clients have businesses, but on the YouTube channel, it's branded around them and their name. And then when people leave YouTube and go to their website, that's when they see the business. We don't need to be corporate and professional and look like an office or look like a set. Because of the, the strategy and the, the way that we're trying to, to find people that want to build a relationship with us, that's why we film in these settings. And that's why I do something so unique and my filming studio is a house. So now let's talk about teleprompters. This, I, I have one, and occasionally I'll use this one. Uh, this, this cap comes right off. So the lens goes right there, and so it covers up the black and you can see the text moving. And so it's, it's a great teleprompter. I only use it for a promo video, something that really needs to be worded correctly, you know, scripted. I actually don't script, and I recommend that you don't either because it takes way too long to script videos, and then reading from a teleprompter, you've, you've gotta really focus the whole time on sounding conversational. So what I do is I make bullet point notes. Now this is one episode right there. So, you know, every, every once in a while I'll look down I'll say, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna talk about next. I look back at the camera and then I, then I keep talking. My team edits it out. So when, when I look down, normally you wouldn't see me look down like that. So definitely my default recommendation is do not worry about teleprompters and learn how to, to outline your content that way. Now, I've actually put a lot more information about how to outline your content in my book, how to prepare for your filming day so that you don't need a teleprompter. And I wanna give you my book for free. In fact, this, my book is called A Hero's Guide to Influence on YouTube. It's basically A to Z of my entire strategy, how to leverage YouTube to build a following around your expertise and to generate leads and revenue in your business. And if you pay the shipping cost, I will send you that book for free. Go to natesyoutubebook.com. I'll also put that link below. All right, a trap that I see a lot of videographers and therefore YouTubers get into is using two cameras when it's not effective to use it. The first one that I could think of that I've seen recently do this is Brendan Bruchard. Now he's got a big following, he's got a very successful business, um, but so often he, he does this, he'll do a two camera shoot where right now I'm talking to you but imagine all of a sudden a camera turn on over here. So now I'm looking this way and you're seeing the side of my face and I'm still talking to you, but we're not making eye contact anymore. It is so irritating to me and it, it just doesn't make sense. It, even if you don't really pay attention to it, you'll notice that eye contact was lost. And when I'm not looking at you, there's not a connection. There's not a relationship being made anymore. But right now I'm looking into your eye and I can talk to you. So you just want one camera. You don't need to worry about a second camera to think that that's gonna raise the professionalism of your videos. It actually decreases your ability to connect and form a relationship. Okay, to that point, um, you wanna talk to one person at a time. And a big mistake that a lot of people make here on YouTube is they'll say, hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad I get to share this with millions of people. Instead, just talk to one person at a time because on the other end of this camera, when they're picking up their phone, it's just one person watching you. And so you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. So instead of saying you all, just say you. Now I love technology. And so as things get bigger and better over time, you know, we tend to want to chase those things. So now we've got 4K, we've actually got 6K, and we've got 
those red cameras that can do 8K or probably 15K by now. You know what? You don't need any of that. I've talked about that in previous episodes where I reviewed a DSLR camera and showed you how to use those. There are times and places for 4K, but in most cases, just stick with 1080p. In the series that we launched in December right here on YouTube, I trained you on my entire YouTube strategy and I did an episode on how to do 20 episodes in a day. And that was really from the perspective of having the energy and how to deliver that. And there were some technical things in it, but tomorrow we're gonna do another episode really focusing on it from the more technical side, like how to move locations, whether you should do things standing or sitting so you have energy, what to do about lunchtime and breaks. We'll even talk about like, how do you keep track of all the video and audio files when you're filming 20 episodes in a day? So I will see you then.